So this is a follow-up for my uh, repair video of the Subtech CB15 uh, car battery charger and I have bought the replacement uh, fuses as I wanted. Uh, the problem now I found that this socket, um, the fuse that was inside here, it wasn't uh, the plastic casing that was just missing. The plastic case, uh, it was molten inside of there. And uh, I have tried to remove the fuse and there are the remains of it. So it was burning as well. So I think the smoke effect was not just from the coil that I thought it was from, but also from the burning fuse. I bet it was a higher amperage than 10 amps, uh, that why, that's why it was still uh, intact while the plastic case was all burned up. Um, now I think I will have to go to the electronic shop again and uh, find a replacement uh, jack for this fuse, a uh, socket for this fuse. Let's see what kind of a socket this is. Oh. Unplug it and take it out. There are some plastic clips holding it in place. Okay, almost there. So maybe you can see inside uh, there's lots of molded plastic, and I still couldn't take out the last piece of the fuse. So now I have a broken fuse and a broken fuse holder. Uh, I will have to replace this or if I can't find a matching um, socket I will have to think of some other way to mount this fuse onto the case. By the way I also got myself a few load resistors uh, from the electronic shop. These are cemented wire wound types. I couldn't find... Um, okay, so I calculated that in order to have 6 amps flowing um, I would have to get a 2 ohm resistor but I didn't, they didn't have any 2 ohm resistor in the high enough wattage uh, because um, there will be a lot of, lots of current flowing and it will overheat if it's a low, low wattage type uh, so I got myself 20 watts, 10 ohms, 5 resistors, which in total, if I connect it in parallel, gives me 2 ohms and 100 watts. That should be sufficient enough to test this power supply when I get it running. So I went to the electronic shop again and uh, I got myself a new fuse holder. And they didn't have the exact type, like this one, uh, but they did have this type and it has a cap with a fuse written on it and there are the contacts it is well quite a cheap one and um, you can see it's uh, rated for less amps than the first one uh, the terminals are smaller and uh, in general it's just uh, not such a quality item I, I can feel it's uh, not so sturdy and uh, yeah this this seems to be a higher quality one but uh, this is the, w the only one I could get locally uh, automotive fuse type uh, panel mount uh, holder uh, this is rated for 15 Okay, it does 15 to 30 amps. And this one I think will be fine for 10 amps. We'll see. Let's see if it fits in the case. Uh, yes, it does. And uh, I may be able to even mount it with a few screws. Uh, if not, then I may have to drill a bigger hole or um, drill a little notch on both sides of the case uh, here and here the screws wouldn't mount properly so I did end up uh, doing a few notches here's one up and here's one down and now I will try to mount the fuse holder 
and see if it fits. Here I have already mounted the fuse holder. Uh, it's not a perfect fit, but it holds quite well and uh, it's sturdy and I think it will be fine. Uh, I found just the right screws and uh, washers for, for this type, uh, for this type of fuse holder. And here's the back side. Let's connect it, the fuse holder. Okay, here I have another problem. Um, the connection is loose, so I will have to fix this as well. I have used my pliers and um, push this uh, connector a little bit on the sides. So now it stays very well. Let's insert the fuse and uh, change the 8 amp to 2 amp fuse. I actually got a 2.5 fast acting fuse. I think it will be perfect for this. I have replaced all of the fuses with the correct type ones. Uh, here is a 10 amp automotive fuse. And here I put 2.5 amp uh, fast acting fuse. This should be fine. Now what I'm going to do is uh, connect all these 5 10 ohm resistors in parallel to give me a total of 2 ohms. And then I will test the 12 volts function um, if it can deliver minimum 6 amps. If that is okay, we'll let it run for a while, see if no more smoke comes from this device. And um, then I may even briefly test the boost function and the 24 volts function. But because my resistors are not rated for this much power, I will just uh, test it very briefly, just to see if it works. I have turned on the device. Uh, and I have connected one side of the one electrode the negative side to one side of my resistor uh, dummy load and now I will connect the second one and uh, see what happens. Ideally since it's a 2 ohm load and if it can deliver 12 volts um, there should be around 6 amps flowing through it. So, after a few sparks, let's see what the meter is showing. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 7 amps. Uh, that is a little bit too high, so let's check the voltage. I have connected my multimeter probes and it's showing us 10.2 uh, volts. Uh, so, there is something not right with this ampere meter. I have turned my on my multimeter and set it to amps to measure amps and I have selected the right input jacks for that. Uh, it should be able to um, pass 10 amps without blowing the fuse on the multimeter so let's test it. I connected one side of the car battery charger to one uh, side of my uh, dummy load and another one to the multimeter and let's see what happens when I connect them. 4.80... 4. Point, about 4.8 amps. And uh, yeah, let's, let's do this again and see if the reading on the car battery charger is still the same. Uh, yep, it's showing still 7 amps even though my multimeter is saying 4.8. So there's definitely something wrong with this ampere meter. Uh, now my theory about what's wrong with this uh, ampere meter, I think it's not the ampere meter itself, but rather this coil uh, that the uh, ampere meter is measuring uh, the uh, current flow through. And I think that uh, due to overheating at some point, uh, it changed its resistance value and now it has a higher value than uh, it was before and now the ampere meter which is essentially I think a millivolt meter it's getting uh, 
more voltage drop across this coil and thus it registers uh, more amps than there are actually flowing. Just out of curiosity, I have connected uh, my uh, Fluke temperature probe to the multimeter and I want to measure how much heat it is um, the dummy load is generating when um, there is about 5 amps of current passing through it. So the ambient temperature is about 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, and um, the resistors may still be warm from my last attempt to power them. Let's check what's the temperature now. So it's rising steadily because uh, the temperature probe itself has to warm up. So it's about 32 degrees. Now let's connect power to my resistors. It should be about, like from the last time we measured, it was about 5 amps, 4.8 or so. Some sparks. It's showing about 7 amps, so yeah, from my last experience, it's about 5 amps. And let's check the temperature and see how fast it rises and how much. So it's 32, 33, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10. So it's rising about 1 degree per second now. I will leave it for a few minutes and then uh, come back and uh, check it again. By the way, when I was connecting uh, the new uh, putting on the putting in the new fuses and then connecting uh, all the leads together I accidentally shorted them and I blew one of the 10 amp fuses that I had luckily I bought two of them so now there's the second one hopefully I will not short it out this time I think what about what I'm going to do about this incorrect reading uh, which is showing about 7 amps for 4 and uh, 4.8 and here it's showing 7.5 or so uh, I think I will clean the leads of this uh, measuring resistor unscrew everything and uh, clean it up a little bit maybe with a contact cleaner or um, with a Dremel or something and then if that doesn't help I may try uh, to measure the resistance of it and maybe calculate how much it should be and maybe trim a little bit um, like cut a few p a few coils out of it or, or something like that as last thing it was running for a couple of more minutes let's check what's the temperature of my dummy load just for fun so it's risen past 90 degrees Oh, it's cooking temperature 110, 120. Right. About 130. About 132 degrees. So I can cook on it already. <laughs> and I have a cooking plate ready, so. Hmm, it smells like toast. And uh, who needs a toaster if you have a car battery charger and a few resistors? <laughs> Yummy! Now that both sides are cooked and crunchy, all I need is a little bit of uh, peanut butter. Sure. Mm, yummy! There we go. Mmm. So, let's try resistor toasted bread with uh, peanut butter. I just could not resist not finishing uh, the whole piece of my bread and uh, the rest of the <laughs> jar of my peanut butter. It's just yummy and uh, very addictive. Yeah. See ya.